Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And now for Off the Press, let's go straight to the Nigerian Tribune just before we introduce our guests and share some of the major stories making headlines uh, across the country today. The first one, now the big one, which should be on your screen in just a few seconds, is on the NDDC. It says, over 13,777 NDDC projects compromised, says the report. As federal government receives forensic report, vows to prosecute people behind abuse of 6 trillion Naira uh, commissions funds. 2023, Atiku moves meetings to Ibadan, wades into Makinde or your PDP chief team's feud. And bailout funds, Kogi debunks EFCC's allegations. It was a story that we shared yesterday where 20 billion Naira loan, which was given to the Kogi state government uh, for, um, to augment you know, salaries and some of all of that, was allegedly paid into a totally different bank account uh, to generate interest, according to the EFCC. Still on the Nigerian Tribune, federal government robbing south-south of gas revenues. Akwa Ibom governor laments at meeting with uh, RMAFC. And also only PDP and NEC can suspend me, says Uche Secondus. Inigo Assembly passes anti-open grazing bill. Uh, SEC going bankrupt. Senate raises alarm. 5,890 terrorists have surrendered, says Defense Headquarters. And police rescue five abducted Zamfara students. Afaka students abduction suspect arrested. 27.4 million Nigerians earn less than 100,000 naira per annum. And federal government to make COVID-19 vaccine mandatory for civil servants. Let's take a look at the next newspaper. It's the leadership. The headline says, citing poor working conditions, remuneration, doctors, health workers embarked on strike 10 times in six years. Nigeria has a ratio of one doctor per 2,753 citizens. Against WHO's recommended 1, 000, one doctor to 600 persons. 33,000 of nation's 74,000 registered doctors leave for greener pasture. Federal government to make COVID-19 vaccine compulsory for workers. Also on the leadership newspaper, Delta court verdict has nothing to do with Buni committee. That's according to the APC. Bailout funds, Kogi debunks EFCC's claims, threatens legal action. Fresh tension in worry as Atuasi III moves to the robe Olobushire others. 25.7 billion naira theft. Court freezes Atuche's 19.1 billion naira in 24 banks. All right. Um, away from the leadership, let's see what we can find on the Punch newspapers. This morning. Big story there, rise in spending. Federal government's three-year deficit hits 15.4 trillion naira amid revenue crisis. Revenue stood at 12.79 trillion naira. Uh, aggregate expenditure 28.14 trillion. Reduce high cost of governance, boost taxes, experts advise federal government. Also this morning on the punch, <coughs> Twitter ban remains, says NCC as Nigerians lose 220.36 billion naira. No quick fix to doctor's demand, says Mamora. And uh, we can also see here, tackle insecurity, ministers sacking diversionary, minority reps tell Buhari. And also federal government plans compulsory COVID-19 vaccination for civil servants. Still on the punch, uncompleted projects dot Niger Delta, despite 6 trillion Naira NDDC allocation, says the federal government. And um, Ondo residents decry 10-year blackout, blame Benin Disco. Blasphemy, Sharia court orders mental evaluation of Islamic cleric. And a peacemaker stabbed to death during scuffle in a Lagos bar. Um, I think it was quickly just end with uh, stop abductions. UNICEF tells for the government as five Zamfara students are freed. These are the big ones on the um, punch newspapers this morning. Wow, interesting stories there. Let's uh, take a final look at the Daily Independent. APC ignores court order to proceed with local government congresses. Expels Yola South local government chairman for criticizing Buhari. Party's actions reflect impunity in the country. That's according to the NBA chief. Um, this one says military hands over 508, 5,890 surrendered terrorists 
to Bono government, queues 65. COVID-19, federal government to make vaccination mandatory for employees. Enugu Assembly passes anti-open grazing bill. The NNPC is explaining how price differential is fueling petrol smuggling. Forgiving repentant Boko Haram members will traumatize their victims. That's according to Dogo. Federal government moves to probe and prosecute officials over NDDC funds. Concerned over uncompleted, unverified development projects, says over 13,777 projects were compromised with 6 trillion naira since 2001 and courts freezes the assets of Atuche, former bank PHBMD. Let's now say good morning to our guest, the Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Gide Johnson. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Gide Johnson, can you hear us? Oh, well, um, before we, of course, um, connect with uh, Gide Johnson, it seems we might have, be having uh, slight challenges there. Um, you know, remember, it's still off the press. And I, I, I want to, you know, pretty much start with the uh, story on um, six trillion naira gone to the NDDC. And, oh, my. Um, yeah, you know, and, and it says uh, the federal government vows to prosecute people behind abuse of six trillion naira commissions funds. Um, and, um, yeah, oh, wow. Now, oh, good, good, good morning, morning Mr. Johnson. Thanks for joining Good morning. Us. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Welcome. Go ahead, please. Okay, yeah, yeah please. Let's, let's start with a story that captures what you have in your talking point in the paper show. We talks about the value of Naira and how it has affected the economy and how it has affected, which is FG3 years deficit. It's 15.3 trillion annual revenue crisis. 15.4, actually. 15.4, yeah, yes. 15.4 trillion. <laughs> revenue crisis and yet you keep borrowing money and yet there's nothing to show for it in the economy and you begin to wonder what the role of the national assembly as 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 the lawmaking body mm. as the as the body that has authority over funds and in another story in another in the related story you know there's a story that said the senate cries out as a result of um drop in the in the SC, SEC funding. So you begin to wonder, politically we are not getting it right, economically we are not getting it right, security-wise we are not getting it right, and then you are wondering what is really going on, do we have governance or we don't have governance in this, in this, in this, in this country. You take the story, you relate the story with the NDDC report. The NDDC report said... In just a second, Gina Johnson, um, this story was seen yeah. across the papers regarding um, over, over 13,777 um, projects um, being compromised with about 6 trillion naira. I mean, when I took a look at the story, I saw that the federal government had to basically engage the services of 16 audit firms to look into the accounts of the NDDC, you know, before this corruption was uncovered. I mean... What really can we make of this situation to see that the corruption in the NDDC covered with about six trillion naira, and that would have gone, you know, unnoticed if these, you know, audits were not done. Uh, well, uh, I need to up the mic. Remember the up the mic incident. So I need to up the mic. Um, Honorable Minister, up the mic. I think we need to up the mic in the studio so that Nigerians don't hear what we are hearing and they mm. don't see what we are saying. If close to 15,000 projects were compromised. Then you begin to ask, what are the due processes that were put in place? What, what is the essence of the due diligence and the due process office that you have? What about the ministry that has oversight function? What about the internal mechanism? And mm. then what about the National Assembly that has an oversight function over NDDC? That's just NDDC. You recall last week, we see NNPC declared a profit after close to 40 years that they have never declared any profit. And we said, how come they didn't declare profit last year? All of a sudden this year they declare profit. And there is the need for government to do regular, to do regular auditing. Now, you will recall there was one time that the Auditor General appeared before the National Assembly and it was making it was under Obama's just administration. Because by virtue of the extant law of the country, the Auditor General of the Federation should appear before the National Assembly. I think that was the first and the last time we have had something of that nature that the Auditor General will go before the National Assembly and every account of the Federation will be 
will be a report of the account of the federation will be done. We can't continue like this to have a country whereby there are too many loopholes, mm. too many loopholes economically in the country. Now, that, that tells us what is wrong, why our economy is, is down, why inflation is right, why the, um, the product price index is up, commodity price mm. index is up, and the center cannot meet. People are struggling to meet ends meet in the country. And you don't need rocket science. Prayer will not solve the problem. Prayer will not solve the problem. Fasting will not solve the problem. It's just about us doing the needful. And those who have elected into, into offices to do the right thing, and those that we have appointed into the civil service to represent the public, should serve the public. And until we do that, we continue to have these stories that make you to lose your head and wonder, what is happening? Gina Johnson, this, this I want us to Gina Johnson, I want us to still talk about this final economic story. It's a Sarah report on the Nigerian Tribune that says that 27.4 million Nigerians earn less than a hundred thousand naira per annum. Gina Johnson, a hundred thousand naira per annum, and that's 27.4 million Nigerians. What does that really say about the standards of living in this country? You see, they, they, are, they are being economical with the truth. It depends on the analysis and the index you are using for analysis. I am sure if you go further down, out of that 27 million, I'm sure 26 million will be earning less than 30,000. 26 will be earning less than 30,000. What is the minimum wage? Now, what is the minimum wage? If government is struggling to pay the minimum wage, even the one that the NRC agree with the federal government, some state government are not paying it. It's clear that Poverty pervades the land. It's clear that people are struggling. You know how many people are you know how many people ask you for for for, for palliative? You hmm. all right. Julia Johnson, um, let's move over to talking um, away from the economy. Let's talk security a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna lump three stories together. I'll start with the Enugu State Assembly. This is on the Nigerian Tribune now. It says Enugu Assembly passes anti open grazing bill. Also, 5,890 um, terrorists have surrendered, says Defense Headquarters. And, of course, police rescue five abducted Zamfara students. Uh, if you can, you know, lump those uh, three together and uh, let's uh, get your thoughts on them. Judy Johnson, can you hear us? Wow. Right, seems let's let's try again. to reconnect with Judy Johnson. But really, this story um, about the repentant terrorists really shook me. It, it shook me so <laughs> bad, seeing that um, the military said they had handed over 5,890 surrendered terrorists to the Bono State Governor. Judy yeah. Johnson, can you hear us? <laughs> Judy Johnson, uh, can you hear us clearly? All right, we still have those challenges. Um, so we've spoken about, you know, repentant terrorists for a long time. And um, this is maybe the first time that it's been, you know, boldly written as terrorists, uh, repentant terrorists uh, and, and surrendering. Um, in the state, of course, we spoke about that earlier, um, passing the anti-open grazing law mm -hmm. and the uh, five abducted Zamfara students which have been rescued. Um, I don't know if this, you know, tells or shows that maybe the rest of them could be rescued is it also, does it also mean that the police know where the rest of these uh, students are? Uh, what steps will be taken after, you know, the, the five were rescued? Um, it would also be important to know how they were even rescued, if it was, you know, on their way to wherever they were taken, that they were rescued. All five of them, you know, ran away from terrorist camp. It's, it's a lot of questions that need to be, you know, asked and need to be answered. And, um, you know, yesterday I remember that I mentioned, you know, the need to know if, the, if these regions really have the DSS. You know, who exactly is gathering information or intelligence in these regions? What exactly are they doing? You know, are, are they, you know, have they completely moved you know, out of the northeast um, and left, you know, the police or whoever else is remaining there to handle uh, security challenges? Julie Johnson, can you hear us? I can hear you. All right. Uh, because the, 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 the thing is that when you reward criminality, you are encouraging criminality. That's just it. How would... Who gives, who gives the military that authority? Is it the National Assembly or is it the court? Do we have respect for the laws of the land? If somebody should just steal, let me say, steal a car, what do you think the, the judicial system would do to that person? Now, we are not talking about people that are bent, destroy lives and property, destroy homes, destroy many things, and then you're handing them over. You are saying they are repentant. 
who how do you measure the repentance how what was the mechanism is he can, can you measure repentance scientifically can you measure it what is it did, did you did you open the heart of the person or you use a light detector or there's a technology for measuring repentance i don't know and i don't understand and when we do that we are sending wrong signals we are sending we are sending wrong signals and that demonstrates the level of impunity that agencies of state and government have for us as a country and have for us as a nation and they have for us as a people which takes me to the story of the apc now the apc said they are not bothered about the court order stopping them from having their lg congresses tomorrow now if an institution in a democratic society which is the party system which is the platform which you use to gain access to control power state power and authority says he has no respect mm. for court order now what do you expect such will do when he gets to power that's the degree of impunity we are witnessing what stops the party from stopping the congress tomorrow and try to resolve that legal issue that is that has bedeviled that it which also affected the pdp too secondos in, a, in another story in the newspaper said it's only the sec and uh, it's only the national executive committee that has the power to sack him so the ruling party is bedeviled with crisis the 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 opposition party is bedeviled with the crisis both parties have no respect for their constitution just imagine if those parties emerge as the governing party in nigeria you have no respect for the culture of nigeria and they will reward criminality just like we are seeing rewarding repentant um and, and, and terrorists and saying that oh they have repented they have done this they have done that i don't think we right. need that all right as Gina johnson um i want us to take a look at the story that we um read earlier on the leadership newspaper and it said that doctors and health workers embarked on strike 10 times in six years, citing poor working conditions and remuneration. And the question is, how long are we going to continue this cycle? I was practically, um, um, I, I, my family um, was a victim of this. Uh, I lost my wife in 2019, so I could, I could explain all the process. If I, if I catalog my experience, of what I experienced in Nigerian medical facility, you'll be shocked. And um, the situation whereby you have you 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 you, you read out the data, one to almost three thousand patients, whereas the global standard is one to six hundred, yes. and thirty three thousand out of the seventy four thousand medical doctors we have. Uh, that's over forty percent of our medical doctors are migrating abroad. Why better better working condition? Better environment, and we seems not we seems not to to, to to be bothered about it. You wonder who is the minister of health, who is the minister of state for health. Where you have people that have taken the minister of health, for example, is someone that has not worked for a very long time that has gone into politics. The minister of state for health is someone that has left. Medicine for a very long time. That's Senator Mamora from Lagos State and Chris Ngigi earlier for, for, for Manambra State. I have left medical practice and I've gone into politics. And these are the people that are managing your health sector. These are the people that are fed, that are fed on on, 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 on the nations, on the nations. Well. Because the moment you become a minister, you become a senator, you become a governor. You don't. You are not bothered about whatever happens again. What you eat, what you drink, what you wear. The state takes care of it for you. So, as a result of that, these are the people that you put at the top of managing your policies for you. And 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 that and that's the challenge. And that's the challenge we have. It, it is pathetic. All you need to do, I tell people, may you pray not to be sick. If you pray to be sick, may you pray for God to heal you. Because if you go. For example, I can tell you that I've spent six weeks straight in the hospital and I've had cause to engage consultants hmm. that were treating my wife without telling them who I am and not knowing who, who, who are. You, what, what makes a doctor a doctor? It's his ability to, to study medicine. And everybody is a researcher because through observation, the key 
research element we have is observation. So I was with my wife. I know my wife medical situation more than anybody because I was always with her. And then you see the way issues are mismanaged. And if that's doctors and networkers, what are we doing concerning this? All right. Um, if you read the story of, 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 of the person that succeeded me, my colleague that succeeded me as the, the, the current deputy provost of Nigerian Institute of Journalism, he lost his wife last month. He lost his wife. You need to read this story. His experience with the medical situation in Nigeria is pathetic. Now, what do you expect a doctor to do when a, one doctor will attend to 3,000 people? Whereas he's expected to attend to only 600 people. So it's, it's about the failure of, of, of the system. And when our leaders, the national leader of the APC, traveled abroad for medical, for medical, the president, when he's sick, he travels abroad. Everyone of them, why would, they, why, would, why would they want to resolve the problem in the health sector? We have said it and we are saying it. Anyone that is in public service should not seek medical help abroad. We should pass it as a law. Anyone that is in public service should not send his or her children to a private institution. Not to talk of sending the children to schools abroad. All right, Judy Johnson. That should be the standard. Yeah. Um, let's now let's move away from health um, and now look a little bit into financial fraud uh, allegations. Uh, you know, there's two stories here that are pretty interesting. First of all, in Kogi State, there was a story yesterday. That said that um, the Kogi State government received a 20 billion naira loan and instead of using it to augment salaries as it was meant for, uh, it was placed in a certain bank account uh, to generate, um, you know, uh, uh, profit. Interest. Um, uh, interest, rather. To so generate interest. Um, there's that one and then so there's, there's, there's also the Atuche story. It's on the leadership. It says 25.7 billion naira theft court freezes Atuche's 19.1 billion naira in 24 banks. So quickly share your thoughts on those two now, stories. Now, you ask yourself this question. When you see the bottom line of banks, and you ask them, how do they make money? How do they come about this profit margin after tax every year, year in, year out, without engaging in investment banking? What they engage is in commercial banking. Because for you to get a, for you to get loans, just approach the banks. How many loans are our banks granting to small and medium scale enterprise? And then you wonder, you see the amount of money. Now, the one in Kogi State shouldn't surprise anybody. What did they not do with the pension fund? It's what is done across the state of the federation. And it's a systemic failure. It's about people that are going to do it. They are not doing it. What you have is people will take government funds or resources that have been allocated for a particular, and they will place it in bank for three months, for six months, and then they will collect interest. It's, 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 it's a criminal act. And at the end of the day, we'll see this story on the pages of this paper, and then before you know it, they'll say that, oh, they have said to that of God, oh, they have repented. So, I mean, because it's a season of repentance. So, still first, and then paper. Kiss, and then all right, I think we're struggling once again with uh, the connection for uh, to GD Johnson this morning. Uh, but you can't, you know, deny there's so many of these very, very huge and interesting stories in the papers this morning. There's, I wish we had time to go through every single one of them. Every, you know, every um, of the papers that we've shared this morning, very interesting stories. Um, I, I, I read the uh, Tucci story once again, and you know, 24 banks. 24 banks um, I mean, I'm, I'm shocked you know if we have that many banks in Nigeria that you know you can quickly throw money in if these allegations are true and it's also not the first time that I've heard of um, you know government um, agencies or you know uh, politicians uh, putting billions of naira that are meant for the state in certain bank accounts to generate interest um, you know after a couple of months and then withdrawing you know you know and, and keeping interest for, for themselves these are just tales that you hear here in Nigeria the challenge and the question will always be, what next? You know, when you hear these things, same thing with the NDDC story of six trillion naira. Um, if for this many years we've not still seen anybody who really has been prosecuted or jailed, and if we're being honest with ourselves, it is a whole cartel that needs to be jailed in certain things, you know, or prosecuted with certain things like this. Not just the person who's accused of stealing, the person who assisted, the person in the banks, the persons who, there's so many of them. 
the auditor general, you know, in, in each organization, the people who, you know, are, are meant to be even, you know, signing off on certain things. There's so many of, the, of these people who are meant to be, um, you know, arrested for these crimes. But if we don't get any of these things, then we're, gonna, we're just going to keep hearing the stories. Um, not long ago, somebody fainted during a, a panel, and that was the end of that, you know, that investigation. Hmm. Anyway. Yes, uh, let's take a break here to return with um, Today in History. I'm going to the year 1981 to talk about uh, a very important law for women. And I'm going to be sharing once again a coup that took place here in Africa in 1987. We'll be back.